My dad used to be a school teacher, so let's start with a pop quiz. Raise your hand if you've used BlackBerry's QNX OS technology any time today. Ah, I thought I was going to get that reaction from you. But you know what? I don't believe any of you. QNX is literally everywhere. It's in satellites. It's in trains. It's in cars. It's in laser eye surgery systems. It's even in robotic vacuum cleaners. And even if you haven't used any of those things, how many of you have switched on a light today? Do you know that over half the power in California is generated from natural gas and the software that is at the heart of those great big gas turbines? Well, you guessed it. It's Cunix. Cunix is literally everywhere. About 10 years ago, we saw our customers start to connect those systems back to IT systems in the corporation. What they were trying to do was achieve operational efficiencies. They were building systems like logistics and routing. And the cost of the sensors and the processors and the connectivity that made that possible, they continued to drop. Well, today, they're still connecting those systems, but it's being driven by the marketing departments. It's being driven by the product departments with the realization that data is at the heart of all the products that we build today. It's literally changing everything. Now, there are lots of hurdles still to be overcome. A modern car, for example, has hundreds of sensors in it. One of our OEMs told us that those cars can generate three gigabytes of data per month per car. Yeah, per month per car. Doesn't sound like much until you start to multiply that by millions of cars. And suddenly, we're swallowing exabytes of data on a monthly basis. And if you believe all the predictions that there will be 50 billion devices connected to the Internet of Things by 2020, we could be talking about trillions of machine transactions and exabytes of data being created on a daily basis. Today's machine-to-machine -machine solutions are simply not going to cut it. What's needed instead is a public cloud, a public applications cloud, a secure public applications cloud that can manage the Internet of Things and that can scale to a global basis. So today, I want to talk to you a little bit about a project that we've been working on at BlackBerry to do these kinds of things. We haven't demonstrated it before. Um, so this is uh, the first time anybody's seeing it. It's called Project ION. And it's a series of initiatives that encompass partners, ecosystems, technology that are designed to help businesses securely and simply build their Internet of Things vision. So I've got a little bit of technology that we've built. Uh, the group at QNX has built. Hmm, interesting. Um, and uh, what you're going to see is a system that we've built, a prototype system that allows you to connect up um, masses of devices to the cloud and in turn collect data from them and make sense out of it. So on the screen, we are looking at, uh, actually, I should set the scenario up for you first. <laughs> Imagine that you are a bar owner in Oakland. And what you want to do is you want to expand your business over to San Francisco. And so you might be looking for a good venue to go do that with. You might have found a nice place down in the hate. Um, looks like a good area, good incomes, lots of nice restaurants. The only piece of information that you don't know at this point in time is whether or not there are people who actually like jazz there. So on the screen, what you're looking at is a worldwide map. The system is bringing in um, uh, data from 10 million different devices across the world. These are all music playing devices, and it's showing information about those devices. And we're only interested, really, in the ones that are in the area that we're trying to reach. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with the browser here. There we go. Um, so we're going to go and put in Hate ashbury and jump to that area. Immediately, we get a view of the map. Uh, we can see shortly all the devices that are generating music. Those are devices in home. They're devices uh, in your car. They're devices that might be on your mobile device. Um, and over here on the right, you can see that there are about 3,000 of them generating data. Different genres of music are present. Uh, you've got demographic information down here. You can even, if you have appropriate permissions from the customer, go and drill into one of them and have a look at the different kinds of music that they're looking at. This particular person is not a jazz enthusiast, a real big rock and roll enthusiast. So we know that there are lots and lots of music enthusiasts in that area in the Haight, that little three-mile three mile radius area. What we really want to know, though, is how many jazz enthusiasts there are. So we're going to go ahead and scrape that based on genre. And we can see that there are hundreds of them in there. So from a business perspective, what we've just done is you found your location. 
You've found the demographics that you're interested in, and we have proof that the kinds of customers that you want are located there. And in the weeks ahead, before you open your business, you'll know more about your customers than your competitors have known about those customers in the years that they've been in business. Because you can expand this to other data sets. You could say, hey, let's use a data set to determine what kind of menu we should uh, offer to our customers, or what kind of acts they might want to see, or what kind of hours they might want to uh, experience, uh, they might want the, the club to be open for. And that, I think, is the power, the vision that we have for the Internet of Things. It's about joining businesses and customers and objects and machines and connecting them together and being able to derive meaningful and valuable data that you can use in your business every day. So you've seen a little bit about Project Ion. You've seen a demonstration that shows you how we can securely and simply and scalably access data for the Internet of Things. It's your on-ramp for the Internet of Things. If you're interested in learning more about it, I'd invite you to come back to the exhibit that we have in the back of the hall. We'll be releasing this into a private preview very shortly. And if you're interested in participating in that, developers, partners, come and talk to us about it. Or, well, we're not going to get the URL on the screen, but we can give you that later on. Thank you very much for your time.